Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so um, this is a really exciting video because we're going to learn about what we mean by Taylor series and complex variables. Uh, we know what we mean by Taylor series for a function of a real variable. And in this video, we're going to answer the question, what are Taylor series for a function of a complex variable? Yeah? Okay, cool. Now, I remind you that in the last two videos, we learned about, in order, Cauchy's integral formula and then Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives. Those two videos, that is the last two videos, are instrumental to your understanding of this video. And that's because the proof of Taylor's series uh, in complex variables, Taylor's theorem for uh, functions of a complex variable, the proof relies heavily on Cauchy's integral formula and then in part uh, on uh, Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives. So without understanding those two previous videos, you're going to have a hard time understanding this video. All right, enough said. Let's get started. So to start talking about Taylor series uh, for functions of a complex variable, why don't we first talk about what we mean by power series for functions of a complex variable. So complex power series first. Similar to a function of a single variable, a power series about the point z equals z sub 0 uh, is defined as this here. Now, if you look at what I have in box, this looks very much like how we define power series for a function of a real variable if only we change the z's to x's, right? And then the b sub j to a sub j or a sub i. Obvious why we want to use j instead of i when we're talking about um, functions of a complex variable, right? As far as our index of sigma here. But yeah, basically this here is very familiar. Um, from the definition of a power series in Calc 2, right? Okay, okay, okay. Um, all right. And so then, you know, like a couple of notes is like if the power series is uh, about the point z equals zero, then in this part, we'll just have z to the power j. Um, also, uh, notice that here we say similar to a function of a single variable. That's because uh, functions of a complex variable act like functions of two variables, a real part and an imaginary part, as opposed to a function of a single variable, right? Okay, okay, okay. Um, all right, all right, all right. But for us, a specific power series is of interest to us here, and that is the Taylor series. And if f is analytic in and on a circle centered at the origin with radius r, that is, if this is true, then the Taylor series for f is given by this blue box here. The Taylor series for f is this infinite sum here, and the b sub j's are given by this quotient. And notice that each of the b sub j's is a corresponding coefficient to each of the z to the power j's. For example, z to the third will have as its coefficient b sub 3, and b sub 3 will be equal to the um, third derivative of f um, evaluated as 0 uh, divided by 3 factorial. Um, now, notice then that this here is a Taylor series centered at z equals 0, right? Obviously, if it's centered away from z equals 0, say it's centered at z equals z sub 0, then this 0 would change to z sub 0. And instead of z to the power j here, as we have here, we'd have uh, z minus z sub 0 to the power j in this part. Okay, now... As I said at the start of this video, Taylor series in complex variables is heavily reliant on Cauchy's integral formula and Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives. And therefore, if you recall the last video on Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives, it should be uh, very familiar why uh, we'd have this. Not uh, familiar is not the right word, but this should look very, well it is. This should look very, very familiar from the last video. And if it's not familiar, then you will see uh, and what is to come later in this video why we have this quotient involved um, in uh, the Taylor series for functions of a complex variable. Basically, just put together the last two videos and then that basically is Taylor series and uh, complex variables. The last two videos being Cauchy's integral formula and Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives. Yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. And as I said... Um, the Taylor series um, given here is centered at z equals z sub 0, and the convergence is uh, in and on the circle given here. That's the same thing as what I have here. And um, yeah, uh, 
as I said, if we instead uh, have the Taylor series center centered at z equals z sub zero instead of z equals zero, then the appropriate replacement is um, having this here instead of just z to the power j and the b sub j uh, would be modified uh, where instead of zero here, we'd have z sub zero. Yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. So this is it as far as stating um, Taylor series and complex variables. Uh, next, we're going to uh, prove uh, Taylor series and complex variables. In other words, we're going to prove this formula. Where did it come from? Yeah, and it's really cool and exciting. So here it goes. Now, before we start the proof, let's put what we had in box up here for ease of reference. And as I said repeatedly, uh, the proof is just an application of uh, Cauchy's integral formula and Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives. And in previous videos, I not only gave you examples of how to use Cauchy's integral formula and Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives, but I also showed you how to prove Cauchy's integral formula. And Cauchy's integral formula said um, this here, and in the video where we proved it, I made very clear that although A here stands for uh, a constant because it is an unknown constant, I could change all the A's here into Z's and all the Z's into A's, and the formula still makes sense. In other words, uh, I'm saying we could have A and Z swap roles here, and the formula would still make sense. And the reason why I want to do that, which is the reason why I want to have the A's and Z's swap roles so as to write this, is because the rest of what is to come will be easier on the eye and easier for you to consume if we look at Cauchy's integral formula in this version. Yeah? Okay, cool, 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 cool. So uh, let's move forward. Now, we know that f of z by Cauchy's integral formula is equal to this here. Uh, this integral times 1 over 2 pi i. And so if you want to know why, then check out that video where we proved Cauchy's integral formula. Now, f of z can be rewritten uh, in this fashion. Uh, and so what I have here, what I have here is exactly equal to this here. It's just algebra. And the reason why we want to rewrite what we had here in this fashion, as you will see, is because, well, in this part, we want to exploit uh, the infinite geometric series uh, where um, z is a complex variable. Remember, 1 over 1 minus r from um, pre-calculus when you're dealing with infinite geometric series uh, for um, x or r, a real um, variable. Well, this time we're going to uh, work with infinite geometric series uh, where uh, instead of x, we have z and or rather a. And um, so then, just like infinite geometric series, where A is R and um, R is a real number, uh, for A a complex number, it turns out that 1 over 1 minus A, which can be written in this fashion, is equal to this infinite sum. Now, showing why 1 over 1 minus A, where A is a complex number, is equal to this infinite sum, showing that this is true, is done in very much the same way that... Uh, 1 over 1 minus r is shown to be an infinite sum uh, in pre-calculus. And so I don't want to repeat that same method uh, to prove why what I have in box here is true. So just believe it, and I'm not even going to dedicate a video to the infinite geometric series for um, a, a complex number. Uh, and so, like, you know, just use this result. And so, yeah, like, using this result in this part will mean that, like, r, which is a, right, uh, in this case is z over a, right? Like if you compare this here to this here, it's obvious that instead of a, I just have z over a and everything else is the same. Meaning that we could, uh, meaning, and by the way, the convergence of this infinite series is for just like um, absolute value of r is less than one uh, when r is a real number. Here we have absolute value of a is less than one where a is a complex number. But yeah, Again, um, we're going to use this this fact in this part. And so then next we go, if we require that the absolute value of um, z over a is less than 1, then instead of this, we can use this right-hand side, replacing the a with z over a, right? And so that means that we can write 
this here is equal to this which clearly then in turn equals this okay what are we gonna do now well we see that this here is exactly this here so we're gonna replace this here with this here okay so doing that and I do it in uh, steps um, first just highlighting here what we're gonna replace otherwise f of z here is the same as it was in this line okay and then making the replacement of shaded with uh, the appropriate replacement here right okay and now we uh, make note that like a to the j here and a can combine to a to the power j plus one and so we do that in the next step right and then our next move will be to swap sigma with sigma <laughs> but yeah swap capital sigma and lowercase sigma so the sum with the integral sign swapped um, will look like um, it will look like this here but wait if you look at this here if you pay attention that's exactly in this form it's just uh, z, sub, z to the power j is right here right but otherwise b sub j is all of this it's 1 over 2 pi i times the integral so if we can claim that we're done we're done um, deriving the Taylor um, series for f of z and so that's exactly what we're gonna do which is at this stage we're gonna say that we're done we have it exactly in this form where the b sub j's are equal to uh, 1 over 2 pi i times uh, this integral now the question that remains is, well, fine, how does b sub j go from this complicated expression to simply this? And my answer to you is, watch the video on Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives. There in that video, we said that if we ignore this 1 over 2 pi i for a second, we said that this integral here, if we view uh, the denominator as a minus 0 to the power j plus 1, then we said that just this integral part is equal to 2 pi i times the jth derivative of f evaluated as 0 divided by j factorial. Ah, that's exactly what this is. And the 2 pi i is not there and the b sub j because, well, we have 1 over 2 pi i here. This integral would have equaled 2 pi i times the jth derivative evaluated as 0 divided by j factorial. Well, the 2 pi i is gone because, well, we have the 1 over 2 pi i here multiplying the integral. But basically, I'm saying the way you go from b sub j looking like this to this is simply by an application of Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives. So watch the last video specifically on Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives. I'm not going to uh, repeat what I said there otherwise. Um, okay, cool. So we're done here. As I said, uh, the next video will be examples of Taylor series and complex variables. Um, and thereafter, we will start studying Laurent series. And so that's really exciting. And otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this. Keep watching. Take care.